Hello and welcome to this product review stroke great ideas for power solutions for your boat video. Yeah, this is gonna be in two sections really. I'm gonna go through first of all, exactly what these pieces of kit are and then why I think they're just so useful to have on your boat. So what are these things? Well, people call them solar power stations or generators. In fact, when I call these generators before, they, people would say, well, it's not a generator, is it? Because it's just a battery that's storing energy and uh, it's not generating its own. Well, actually now it is because this one here, believe it or not, actually is a petrol generator. It looks pretty much the same as, as the other things here, which are basically batteries. But they all work together in a clever and unique new system. This little generator can produce 1800 watts in its fuel saving eco mode. But what really makes this little generator super efficient is the fact that it's generating DC and distributing it to the power stations via special thick cables. We have the max at 1600 watt hours and an extra battery giving us 3600 watt hours in total. The generator has a 4 litre petrol tank and the specs say that will give about 5.4 kilowatts of charge. I charged our devices up fully with about 3 quarters of a tank so that seems about right. And the max is quite versatile in how it will deliver its charge. And so this is should be familiar to to most people if you've seen the uh, the videos we've done before because it's a bigger version of the, uh, of the of the Delta. This is the Max. It's got all the standard things you would expect. Two of your standard USB sockets here so they're just uh, 5 volts, 12 watts that you'll get out of those. It's got the fast charge ones as well. Basically they managed to get uh, a little bit more power out there at 18 watts instead of uh, 12 and that's because they just up the voltage on these. Uh, There's all the smart version of it and even smarter than that and much more useful nowadays because computers run on it and lots of other things. USB-C and that's crucial because they're just really really useful these days. Uh, lots of things run off those and they're capable of really high power. Our MacBooks uh, run, off, run off these and it'll keep up with them while you're editing. None of the others will, will do that uh, and it does that by you know just doing it in a smart way it's, it's with when you plug the lead in it has a look and says okay it starts off at five volts can you take 10 can you take 15 can you take 20 and the MacBook can say yes so it will uh, so 20 volts at five amps 100 watts so that's what you're getting out of each of these so really good really efficient way of, uh, of, of charging your MacBook not having to go through the, the brick which you know means you've got to have your inverter running and then go back down to DC again this is DC all the, all the way through uh, much more efficient much much better but yeah let's continue on with what else we've got on this then pretty similar to, to what we've had before it's got the uh, the cigarette type socket at the back here so that's 126 watts that's available out there it's a regulated uh, output at 12.6 volts just above the cigarette lighter then you've got uh, four mains output here so this is the European version uh, 220 volt uh, you can actually get and I should have done uh, they they have a one that will accept British three pin plugs and these as well quite a clever design because um, we've got a bit of a mixture on this boat it's mostly these the EU ones but uh, but yeah you can get uh, quite a, a clever uh, version of this what will accept both and obviously then there's the, the American one as well and I think the American one has got six outputs not four because they are you know, that, that bit smaller so all the power inputs are under this little flap here you've got a an XT60 at the end there so that's uh, for charging from solar or from uh, any 12 volt source basically so you get some some soda leads uh, which which can go from any panel into that and also uh, one with a cigar lighter that goes to an XT60 that can, can go in there as well. Um, I'll show you on the boat I've got some different ways of doing that as well but this is really good because it's quite high powered so it can take the really big uh, panels uh, it's up to 10 amps at 100 volts so even the big uh, bifacial panel I've got here I can plug directly into this and the inbuilt MPPT inside the the box will um, charge it uh, you know really efficiently really well um, as well as that obviously you can charge by mains uh, really fast this because of the chemistry of the battery it will charge really fast uh, and you can actually with this little switch here slow that down because uh, you know if you're on a boat sometimes in on dock power if you use that on on really fast it's it's just too much power for the uh, for the breaker on the dock side to, to take so i think actually the person that uh, someone high up in in ecoflow must be a boat owner because these are just designed very well for boats uh, they're all just light enough small enough to to be good on a boat even the uh, the generator here you know it's 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 not too heavy you can you can lift it move it around so they've they've made it 
you know, everything the right sort of size. They've all got nice rubber feet on the bottom, nothing slides around. So, uh, you know, they're, they're well designed. Someone, one of the reviews I, I read, uh, described them as the, the apple of the, uh, uh, the power generator type market. And that's, yeah, that's probably right, actually. They're, they're well designed. They put a lot into the design of these things. So, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think they've, they've planned that really well. But the best thing about the whole system for me is the fact that it is all designed around using DC. The, the, the generator provides DC, so it has a special cable. And you'll see the other thing that I haven't shown you that on the, on the EcoFlow around here are the two special ports which take this cable here. So this can take high power DC. It's also got some little pins in there, so it's, it's smart. It can, things can talk to each other. So for instance, you can plug the, the generator into this to charge it. It will charge it directly with DC. That's really important because there's no losses there then. You're not going through an inverter to, to then go back down through a, a, a transformer to charge a DC battery. It's just directly DC uh, generator charging a DC battery, really, really good uh, way of doing stuff. And the little pins in there mean that it's really smart. It can actually look at how, how much it's charged, start itself if it needs to, if the battery goes down to a certain level. And it's all designed for, uh, you know, houses to be an emergency uh, backup and all those sorts of stuff. But, you know, there will be use, uses for this as well, even on a boat, I'm sure that, you know, you know it might, be, uh, might come in handy. But the really good thing for us is it comes with a really long cable so you can have this out on deck as I say I think someone lives on a boat who's designed this this can stay out here I can put this through a porthole down inside these live inside all the time don't have to bring these out on deck to charge them uh, and I can just run the generator when I want to uh, and charge both of these um, and the extra battery is basically just that there's not there's nothing really to play with on there apart from the fact it does have its own little port and in the top here it's got its own cable so that will basically plug into there and then I can plug that into the generator to charge it or into to this one so that it's uh, it's a backup battery for this and I can use the other one as well because the uh, EcoFlow Max has got two inputs so I can charge uh, this one via the generator and then have the little lead go from this one to the extra battery and it charges the whole thing at once. It sees it, it's clever enough to know exactly what's there, charges them all properly, shuts down when it's done, because it's smart. Onto the generator then, that's what really first attracted me to this. I actually looked at the picture of this and didn't realize it was a petrol generator. It doesn't really look like one. It's only the fact that the picture comes with this, the funnel, which comes with it in the handle like that. You think, well, what is that? Um, and yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's a little petrol generator that is purely DC charging and as I say it's light enough to carry around the boat which is great really good sturdy feet on it so to take the side off just turn the two cams here and just pop it out the bottom and drop it out and you can get to the innards it has a little lithium battery in here because it's got an electric start amazingly enough for something this tiny so you have to connect that up when you first get it because it comes disconnected so that's all very neat 80 cc motor good little carburetor in here you can drain it it's got a little drain there so you can drain the uh, any petrol that's in the float down if you're putting it into storage so that's all quite neat you've got to obviously put some uh, oil in it when you first start so that's down here you must have it flat when you're filling it and uh, you have a funnel that fits in nicely into there it doesn't take very much 0.38 of a litre is all it takes of uh, 10 w40 so yeah i've already done that filled it up it has a, a little electronic gauge it's all comes up it'll come up on your phone as well if it's ever short of oil it is very quiet obviously we started up it says 93 decibels that sort of speaking voice level so um i think if i'm in the cockpit with this running on the foredeck i probably wouldn't hear it i don't think i'd hear someone speaking up here so yeah we'll test it out and see Let's put this back on. It needs a, a bit of a, a thump because it's got these bullet type connectors and then you just give these a half a turn and it'll clamp it back in nicely. There we go. So the other things you'll see obviously fuel cup on the top, got a little filter in there and a little red line acts as your gauge to fill it up. Uh, you've also got uh, a switch on there on and off obviously that's just a, 
to let some air in when you've got it running. So when you have it running, make sure you, you turn it on and uh, when you're stowing it, have it off and you're not gonna get any spillages that way. So if we turn it around, have a quick look at the other side, you've got the manual start here and also a switch, which as you turn on, will turn on the uh, fuel, but also power up the, uh, the electronics as well, because I've got the, uh, the power connector connected in there now. So that will show you once it's connected to the batteries, the state of all the batteries, how much power it's putting out, all those sorts of uh, figures, which you can also get on your phone as well. Uh, and you can link that up. Same, you've got the same uh, switch on the uh, EcoFlow Max. This one, uh, IoT reset, is what you press to get the, uh, the Wi-Fi flashing, and you can sync it up, which I've done to my phone very easy. Just took a minute. So that's, that's all done. We'll have a look at that once it's running. Uh, the other thing you have got on here is uh, obviously the, the special output for the for the lead so it can charge directly in DC from here to, to the batteries uh, and also it's got uh, has got an inbuilt inverter as well so you can just get AC out of this if you want to power something directly AC has a carbon monoxide alarm and an oil alert uh, but all those sorts of things that come up on your phone as well if you've got it uh, linked up to that and then it's got the electric start so let's uh, get these connected together and give it a little go so have the devices turned off when you uh, plug them all in. So that's all connected up. Once I've done it, these two come to life. All the uh, displays come on. I do need to turn the actual switch on uh, the generator on though, so that I can actually start it with the electric start, which I'll do now. Just give it a little press. And it did start first time. It'll have another little go. automatically does it. Just so we can get a sense of uh, the noise, I'll go back and uh, have a little uh, listen from the, the cockpit. I don't think you'll hear it too much in here at all, but let's see. I come and sit in here. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just a, a gentle purring, basically. You can't, can't really hear that at all. So, yeah, it's good. I think uh, we're going to be very happy with that. So we can come anywhere on the boat and sit and monitor what's going on. So if I have a little look at the uh, EcoFlow Max, we can see that's got 1600 watts that that's uh, receiving and it's giving eight or 900 watts of that over to the extra battery. So they're sharing it out between them. I can flick over to the, uh, the generator here. So that's, uh, that's the Jenny. It's just about to run out of fuel actually. In fact, I'm gonna swipe it from here and press confirm and that will turn it off. So you just swipe it and turn it off remotely. So it's quite a, a neat little system. And that's why we've gone for it really, because we weren't originally thinking we would have a petrol or a diesel generator. We got rid of our old you know, onboard ge diesel generator, which was nothing but trouble. So I'm not sorry that we've done that, but we could have gone for a, a wind generator or a hydro generator. And you know, it's possible at some stage we might do that, but, but they've got problems of their own. We couldn't put a wind generator on this without shading uh, some of the solar, which is a little bit self-defeating uh, anyway. And this, because it's such a neat little unit and can charge the, uh, the, the Max up so, so well, the EcoFlow Max, um, I think it's a really good option for us. It can keep everything uh, up and running. And having those units isn't just uh, having that redundancy of going over to another unit if something happened to our onboard batteries. Um, we have a you know, really good set now of lithium onboard batteries, the Super B Nomada, Super B Nomada batteries. Uh, we've got six of them. Um, so that gives us a 660 amp hour bank, which is, which is great. But people might say, well, why not just increase the size of that bank then if you think you've got problems? Well, it's not really about that. It's about how much energy you're putting in. Yes, increasing the size of the bank might make it last a little bit longer before it runs down to a point where you have to recharge it. But there is a limit to how big you want to go because with that onboard battery, I want to get it uh, a regular top charge. So I want to really once a month get it up to 100% so that uh, it can do a top balance. And that's quite important. If you make it too big and you, and you don't ever get to that, then you're not top balancing your batteries and they can go out of balance. So that's not something I want to happen. So much better for us to keep that the right size and have this as a, an extra uh, set of batteries that, which we can charge from solar, we can charge from now from the generator as well. You know, it makes really good sense for us and uh, makes it, it, make, it makes it really usable around the boat. So we're going to use it for the next couple of weeks and see how we get on. 
So we're doing a little bit of a test now. You might be able to hear it running out on deck. Got the wire coming through the porthole. It goes down into uh, the extra battery here and to the EcoFlow Max itself. And that's a good thing about these batteries is uh, you know, separate units and small. You can find somewhere good to put it. The, uh, the extra battery can just stay there. It fits in there, jams in there really, really nicely. Uh, the, the Max normally goes uh, in the hole back there uh, and it can actually charge from the big solar panel if we want to from there as well because I've got a tee off from that into it but at the moment it's here because we're using it to charge computers I'm charging the uh, outboard battery as well so of course we don't have to get on the, the floor to look at the uh, the dials there because we can have a look at the phone so if I put this up on screen we can see at the moment uh, 600 707 watts uh, coming out of the uh, the uh, the generator uh, and it's outputting 869 watts if we scroll down we can see uh, 786 of that is going to the extra battery it's just sharing that out to the extra battery um, go down a bit more 54 watts is going through the uh, the cigarette uh, lighter uh, output at the back for the outboard engine and there's a USB-C as well taking 31 that's actually the uh, the iPad at the moment that's uh, that's charging so yeah that's the efficient way of using this and I could actually uh, plug the, the 10 amp output from the uh, the cigarette lighter via the DC to DC converter that we have into the chips batteries because that's giving the right then profile for the lithiums so it could give a tri trickle charge to the lithiums as well no problem at all so I just think it gives us lots of flexibility